And the Lord said to me, this is a big one for Americans. This, the next two are, are big ones. He said to me, these are big ones for Americans. The altar of Baal. The altar of Baal. Baal worship in America is rampant. These demonic deities are running America for the most part. Baal is the God that would have stopped the, the destiny of Gideon had God not taught Gideon to destroy the altar of Baal in his father's house. Gideon would not have been able to deliver Israel I did not dealt with Baal worship, which lets me know that Baal is the number one deity that stops many of you from coming into destiny. So it seems like it's an ancient God that stops destiny. Because God tells Gideon, even though you have met me, if you don't deal with the author of Baal in your father's house, you are going nowhere. Your prophecies will sound like music that never comes to pass. Early the next morning, Judges 6, 28, 38. Judges 6, 20, 28 to 30. And I'll tell you what, Baal. I'm going to go deeper into Baal. Early the next morning when the men of the city got up, they discovered that the altar of Baal was what? Torn down. And the Asherah, which was beside it, was cut down. And the second bull was offered on the altar which had been built. So they said to one another, who has done this? When they searched about and inquired, they were told, Gideon, the son of Joah, did it. Then the men of the city said to Joash, bring your son so that we, he may be executed because he has stoned down the altar of Baal and cut down the Asherah. Amen. That was, you know, the word Baal literally means Lord. So it says it's a deity that tries to replace, rep, to, to, it's a deity that tries to replace the Lordship of Jesus. Baal means Lord. You know, he has, the, 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 you know, you know, the God Baal in ancient times assumed significant roles by the people who worshipped him. Baal was seen as the god of the storm. He was seen, he, 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 he was, he was seen as the, he was the god of thunder. You know, that the Baal, you know, but also he was the god who, who both created, according to the ancient world, Baal was the god over fertility and sexuality or sexual orientation. So a lot of the sexual confusion in America is because of Baal. Baal was worshipped by homosexuality. He was worshipped by lesbianism. He was worshipping by, I mean, doing all kinds of, that was Baal. Come on, somebody. He's, amen. And, every, and all other fatality rites are connected to the issue of Baal. Baal, right? You know, and Baal is such, a, is such a prominent God that even Jesus had to deal with Baal in his day. Actually, Jesus was accused of operating in the power of Baal's coming somebody you know you know so Jesus had to deal with this demonic deity how many know if Jesus is dealing with it it's a real thing it's a real force are you catching what I'm saying amen that's why in my my interview with Sidro I told you that I'm you know come on somebody amen and I don't want to offend anybody who's a Democrat but I'm telling you at some point this political party has become an author of Baal because I'm telling you every have you noticed everything to do with sexuality is promoted by one party because that is the language of Baal he wants to control sexuality sex and how you think about the subject of sex and sexuality that is the essence of Baal worship come on somebody Somebody. Amen. You know, some of your children were now confused about their sex. All you have to do, don't try to counsel them, just cast out Baal. And all of a sudden, they'll get over it. If, if your boy comes, Mama, I feel like I'm a girl. Say, Baal, get out of here, Baal. Don't even try to counsel. Why do you feel like a boy? You are a girl. No, baby, that's... Well, I just feel like a girl. You, you need to say, Bell. <laughs> really, Bell? You're going to do that to my child? Yeah. I, someone say, Boo devil, I see you. Boo say, Boo devil, I see you. <laughs> I'm showing you how to change people around. If you understand what's behind the veil, you can change the conversations in front of the veil. <laughs> Bell. Bell. That's what he did to people. Baal. In the Bible, I don't want to offend anybody, but in the Bible, 
You all, in the Bible, do you know, in the Bible, you just watch the Bible and also read ancient texts. That what you call the, the gay lifestyle was the most prominent way to worship Baal in Baal temples. So how can a lifestyle that appeared in the, in the temple of Baal become a lifestyle God endorses tomorrow? I don't care what you say, homosexuality in scripture and by historical documents was connected to Baal. You got brothers that are struggling, just talk to Baal. Don't try to convince them. They won't listen to you because they are, when Baal is in them, they are attendants to Baal and their lifestyle is how they worship him and give him offerings. Until you deal with Baal, they're going to tell you, I was born this way. Because the altar will speak and defend the offering and then protect the attendant. So you deal with the altar. That's, and we have a prophet, I just gave you a prophetic, the Bible just gave us a, a prophetic pattern of how to deal with people who are addicted to altars. You don't talk to them, you speak to the altar. The prophet never argued with the king. He didn't tell the king, what you're doing is wrong, man. You are the king, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. No, he bypassed the attendant, spoke to the altar. That's what I'm doing tonight. I'm just bypassing everything and speaking to the altar. You don't think those altars are hearing me? Oh, you better believe it. When you see how changed your life you'll be by tomorrow. Let's stand up and divorce Baal. Say, Heavenly Father, I know that I live in America where Baal worship is very prevalent. So at some point, I may have touched that worship. I may have connected with people who are, who are worshiping Baal. So Heavenly Father, as I come before you, I'm asking you, God, to, uh, to forgive me and cleanse me from anything I have in common with the altar of Baal that can give him power to control my fertility to control my sexuality. Heavenly Father, I renounce Baal. I'm asking you, God, that you divorce me right now from this demonic God called Baal in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, any altar to Baal that my bloodline opened themselves up to, I'm asking God that you close the door as you deliver me in my soul, in my DNA, and in my bloodline. I'm asking God that you send the angels to destroy every altar to Baal in the name of Jesus. I declare and declare as from today, I am free from the influence of Baal. In Jesus' name, Lord, I declare that Jesus is setting me free from the altar of Baal in my bloodline, in my soul, in my DNA. Put it out! The Lord says, Francis, some of the proof that you have been delivered from Baal for the women is that your monthly periods will become painless. God said to me, I don't, in, uh, it's not me, it's Baal claiming the rights of fertility. Because altars become more powerful in you when there is a bloodshed. The highest offering you can give an altar is bloods.